Hello, I'm Nicole, and I'm going to be walking you through step-by-step -step the new Trace Customer Portal tool. This customer portal allows administrators the ability to copy users, to create new users and new departments, as well as create new users to relate to or exist in an existing department. We're going to go tab by tab. The first tab is actually copying or cloning a user. First, I would pick a user that I want to use as my source copy. I can type it in if I know the person's name. If not, I can use the search zoom to uh, go to a lookup window and actually pick users that I have access to. So I have Derek Morgan, and at this point, you can see I have Derek Morgan's information that is now displayed. So I can use this to confirm, is this person the source that I want to use so that his security profile and flags that he's set up for are going to be the same flags that are going to be copied for the new user that I'm setting up. So you can see you have certain information that's displayed, the name, facility, email, job title, um, if the person is still active within the department, as well as if you want to click on the show user security details, I can click the plus symbol. This really gives me a great bit of information. I can see all of the security groups that are that Derek is associated to. So you can see insurance verification, scheduling, uh, PA nurses, uh, perhaps this is a centralized scheduling here, and then the call center. Also, if I want to look at the actual flags that Derek Morgan has, I can take a look here and I can see that Derek has the ability to access manager reports. Um, he has the ability to download and you can see also with the departmental flags he what abilities he has. Really he is an administrator. For definitions on all of these flags you can click on your flag definitions link here and it will give you a legend that you can refer to. So this all looks correct. I'm going to go ahead and use Derek's security information as my source copy when I'm creating my new user that I'm setting up. So I just enter in the new user's name. First name and last name and email address. You can enter in the job title if you would like, as well as extension and setup notes. That is optional and that is for uh, definitely your own records. Also, keep in mind here, if you enter in any setup notes, perhaps you want to communicate to our support department that this user has certain exclusions that you'd like to give. Then you can type that in and they will absolutely um, refer to the setup notes that you type in here when they complete the setup process. But here I want Nancy Troy to look just like Derek is a new administrator on my team. I don't have any setup notes and I am going to keep checked the notify user. Notify user basically when it is checked allows an automatic email to be sent to the new user, Nancy Troy in this example, to notify Nancy of uh, the ability now to access the um, trace uh, system and she will get a link where she will have the ability to create login credentials and register um, in order to access tracker uh, and trace. So if you want to uncheck that, that means that as a process you don't want an email to go out. You want to perhaps create that email on your own and send it out directly. But I do want the system to automatically send that out once I submit this user. So I'm going to keep it clicked or populate it. You can see when I highlight on the question mark, it's like a bubble help, so it will give you a guide to each of uh, these particular fields. At this point, I can click Next. Next is going to take me to the confirmation window. But before I do that, I wanted to explain to you what you're seeing here at the bottom, which is the all submissions in the last 30 days. It shows you as a server all of the setups, the copies, the creating new users, new departments that have been created um, in the last 30 days. If you'd like to download this and let's say 
perhaps you want to place it into Excel and do some reporting of your own, you can just click the download link that's at the bottom left hand corner of the window. At this point, I'm ready to move forward and click Next. Now when I click Next, I'm on my last step here for copying that user. It really is a confirmation window. I have my source user, which is Derek Morgan. I have the new user here, um, and I have their information. So I have a confirmation. If there's anything I need to edit, I can click the Back button, and it will take me to the Edit window, and I can make my changes. If I'm finished, I can click Submit, and that is your submission button. When it's submitted, now the user is being created. One item that I wanted to note with you is the email address. Email address is a required field because the email address will be the user's user ID. Everything looks appropriate here, so I'm going to click the Submit button. So you can see at this point that it gave me a copy user was successful and a note that the trace team is working hard on the user um, request at this point and you will be notified via email shortly when the new user has been set up completely. So you will have an email sent to you as a confirmation that indeed we received your request and it is indeed complete. At this point, I can click Copy Another User, and it's going to take me straight back to um, the Copy User window where I can go in now and create a new user um, and pick a new source copy uh, or use the same source and create a new user. So really, that's all there is to it for copying and cloning a user. Let's go to the second tab, which is Creating a New User. Now, if you've already had access to the Copy or Clone User tab, this Create User slash Department tab is what is brand new with the Customer Portal. You can see I have multiple facilities with this setup, so I need to click the facility um, that I want to work in. I'm going to click Next. And now at this point, I have my information, and I'm just going to go from top to bottom. In this example, I'm creating a new department that is now going live, let's say, um, with FactCert. So I'm creating the shell information to be set up. You type in the actual new department name. The new department name is actually how the department is going to be uh, labeled within the tracker system. You will skip the next field, which is selecting the existing department. That we will discuss at a later time. But we're creating a new department, not really pulling an existing department. So we're going to keep that empty. So we've entered in our centralized scheduling as our new department. What is the department function? This field is for the Whitestone Group support process. We have a standardized list of departmental functions that gives us a window into exactly the primary work that's being done in that department to help us ensure that we're providing the best support necessary. So with that being said, it's not a required field, but we would really appreciate it if you would go in and actually populate that for our own understanding on the TRACE TWSG side. You will not see this department function listed anywhere in your tracker system. It will be your home team that you labeled here under new department that will be visual. And that will be this, in this example, centralized scheduling. Then I just enter in my name of the new user that goes to this new department. As you can see, when you create a new department, it is mandatory that you create a new user also that is associated with that department. This tool is really to be used when you have confirmation and you're ready to truly execute a new department being created with a new user. Uh, it is not used for you to be able to really go in and create departments proactively and have them ready in a queue, um, but it's ready for you to execute the work. So that's why it's asking for an active user's name, because we should at least have at least one user that's associated with this new department.
As you can see, the same fields that were required on the first copy user tab are required here, which uh, are the first name field, last name field, and email address. And again, email address will be the user ID for that new user of Tracy Small. I can enter in the job title, the phone, and the extension. That is for your records. But here it is very important, as you can see with the bubble help, for the admin. Is this person an admin? This allows them to have admin rights. So should the person have the ability to set up destination codes with Faxert, be able to delete faxes, as well as edit the MCO list? If they should, we definitely want to check that off. Also, should this new user have the ability to access reports? Next is security. I'm going to say that Tracy, um, yes, is an administrator for her department, um, and she should be able to view transactions on the uh, facility level. Any setup notes that you would like to give to our support department um, as a guide, please do so here. And then I will click Next. Now keep in mind, before I click Next, on the bottom, I still have the same information that I had on the first tab, which is my quick view which is all submissions in the last 30 days that you have access to. I'm ready now to click Next. And at this point, it gives me a confirmation window. Everything looks good. If it didn't, I can always click back and go back and edit, but everything looks great, so I'm going to click Submit and submit my request. And you have the note here. You will also always be notified via email when your submission has been completed in our system. Now I can go back and create another user if I want to. And that really is um, how straightforward and easy it is to be able to move through each of these tabs. The last tab is the user listing. Now we talked about before um, in the other two tabs you have a quick view to see the last 30 that have been submitted. Your user listing tab is showing you all of the submissions that have come across. So this gives you the full window. You have the ability to download if you would like. You could click the download button here and export whatever you would like into Excel, but this is really your user listing of all of the setups that have uh, been created and all of your users that are set up really on the server. And that's really it. That's all of the major functionality really within the customer portal. And I just went here to the front. If you have any questions about uh, getting access to the tool, please contact customer support and your account manager. Also, please keep in mind that if you already have the tool, if you have any further questions, always feel free to contact customer support. Thank you so much.